PPCL stock fell for the second straight day. It is not off too much from the 52 week high. Is it an investment grade stock now? We'll talk about that in the nugget section today. Hi everyone, welcome to the update of 9 September. One of the most awaited IPOs, Bajaj Housing Finance opened today, got sold out in four hours straight. One thing to note if you are planning to invest is there are at least three categories that you could apply for. There is a category for employees. There is a category for general public and there is a category for existing shareholders if you have existing stocks of Bajaj Fincer or Bajaj Finance. I usually don't apply in IPOs but in this one I did that too in the shareholder category because I have stocks of Bajaj Finance. I am not very hopeful of any allocation though. Overall Nifty and Bank Nifty numbers indicate it was a positive day however it was not. Market bet was actually not that good. Market was held together by HUL and ICIC Bank to a large extent among the heavyweights. Also, ITC was up 2%. Reliance still in red, but at least it has moved up towards the middle. And post lunch banks picked up. Most of the banks are actually in the green SBI, HDFC, Indescent, Access, Kotak, ICICI. That is why we have ended up in the green. I have added a yellow indicator for the top five sectors. Four of the top five sectors were in red. Hence, the graph was biased towards the BS only. Now, the insurance pack which I have highlighted that did not fall much today. It may, however, fall a lot tomorrow because GST meeting today was inconclusive. They have deferred to the decision to the next meeting. Defense pack continues to crack. Today, it was a turn of BDL or Bharat Dynamics that cracked 4%. Every stock is at least 20% away from the 52 week high now. Both Nifty and Bank Nifty opened with slight gap down but then went up whole day bank nifty also for bank nifty there was a sharp uptick around one o'clock nifty's trading range was close to one percent today 200 points closed nearly at the highest point of the day same for bank nifty after opening it was green literally whole day the trading range for bank nifty today also was good on friday it was 900 points today it was 800 points while it was a green day for nifty and bank nifty both nifty it today fell 0.75 so did Nifty Energy 0.7%. Next 50 minor uptick only. Auto, the downtrend continues from previous week. FIIs and DIIs both bought today nearly 3000 crore combined. Reliance and TCS did not go anywhere. Infosys corrected a bit. ICICI up 2.2%. The consumption stocks HUL and ITC were up a lot today. US markets ahead of the Apple event later today were in deep red. This is Friday's data. NASDAQ down 2.5%. Now crude is below $72, I'm talking about rent. It is at a support level right now. Note that there are two points here. Below around $75, ethanol blending does not make economic sense. That is one point. Second is it becomes non-profitable for most countries to drill oil and hence there could be production cuts if crude falls beyond $70. In another news, some of the banks are increasing their interest rates. So some of you may see your home loans get costlier at least. This is when the entire world is talking about interest rate cuts. That is the cost you and I need to pay for their inefficiencies. 24 stocks were down in Nifty, 26 were up. HUL hit a fresh lifetime high today. ICICI, HDFC, Kotak, Access. Rare to see four banks in the top 5-6. ITC was up as well. Consumption pack was on fire today. What was down? ONGC, NTPC, Tech Mahindra, Tata Motors, Reliance. Tata Motors is in the worst fear zone right now. Followed by ONGC, PPCL, which I'll talk about in the nugget section. Whole India. Insurance is the greediest sector right now. Next 50, 18 stocks down, 32 up. Good volumes in the top players. Godrej Consumer, United Spirits, Dabur, Bosch, Adani Energy. What was down today? PFC was down most, followed by Bajaj Holdings. REC, the twin of PFC, Gale, Adani Total. Look at the charts of the consumption stocks here. HUL was consolidating till about 12. Then suddenly shot up and consolidated. Around 130, it hit an all-time high. ITC was up whole day and then it consolidated. TCS, minor downtick. Infosys was actually up and then it corrected towards the end. ATL has been more down than up of late. Today it was up 0.2% but it was very volatile in a range of about 17 rupees or 1.13%. Now HUL is getting into overbought zone. That does not mean that it will correct immediately but time to be cautious. The angle between 50 DMA and 200 DMA is clearly indicating the bullishness. Let's check ITC as well. So ITC also is showing the bullishness. However, it has just turned back from the overbought zone. And what is not bullish is Reliance. 
moving towards the oversold category in double quick time the graphs also are parallel for 50 dma and 20 dma same with tcs it has just turned back from the overbought zone the bullishness is intact right now in tcs now look at the banks towards mid of the day after one o'clock nearly each and every bank was up especially in the public sector thanks to the ipo bajaj finance was green but efc was down irfc was down hl is doing okay it is not in oversold territory pl is nearly in that zone now oversold musgaon dock the bullishness is still there Cochin shipyard clearly oversold grse the 50 dma is now flattening out hindustan zinc has been correct for since may now it is perhaps time for the stock to consolidate it or maybe move up from overbought zone it has slowly come down to oversold zone it stocks were weak today however the cuts were not that deep most stocks remain in the green zomato keeps swinging between upgrades and downgrades power pack and tpc corrected a lot today 1.3 percent remaining stocks were doing okay volumes were pretty high people are not able to differentiate between refiners and marketing companies at all volumes have started thinning out in the oil companies consumption pack had a fantastic day today look at the big stocks itc up two percent hul up three percent godrej and dabar three and a half and three percent fantastic volumes for the entire pack nearly same with food and tobacco today's 14 sectors were up out of 36 automobile was a mixed bag the leader tata motors was down a percent banks everything green icic up most with two percent gains beverages had a good day Varun beverages up 2.2 percent united spirits and united breweries were up nearly three percent chemicals continues the good run construction engineering corrected today also strong performance by nearly all cement stocks trend up and continues in the green zone demarted at 52 week high motial oswal and investment banking corrected nearly five percent today heavy profit booking abb up siemens down suzlon got a big order but it was not up it was actually down half percent kalyanjola is down a percent but still in green zone titan and page industry are out of the green zone now the fall in vodafone was arrested today just one percent down I was out of investable cash today, so I sold some of the set in credit inventory at a steep loss. Idea is to buy it back in few days. I bought BPCL and I'll talk about it in the nugget section. I bought two lots of PFC, one for long term and one for short term for trading purpose. This was primarily because PFC was down nearly 6% in the middle of the day. And I actually want to swap out my REC inventory with PFC for the long run. Overall, another deep red day and a day of investment as well. Time for the nugget section. Today we'll talk about BPCL. Why is it falling and is it still an investment grade stock? It has actually not fallen much. If you see 52 week high is 367. So 20 rupee or 6% fall only from the top. In the year it is up nearly 100%. Also news channels are mixed back. Three days back CNBC TV18 was saying HPCL and BPCL are falling because the government may reduce the prices. Today money control is saying in company how will it be made? Zim business three days back was talking about brokerages maintain buy call on iocl bpcl so when new channels can't make up their mind it is perhaps time to ignore them one thing i want you to note is there is one steep bump up here and one fall here so this bump up is where fis increase their stake by two and a half percent and this bump up is where fis reduce their stake by nearly two percent i talked about this fact earlier also crude is now at a support level the next levels are pretty low I don't expect crude to break these levels. Maybe touch a 65, 66 one day, two day, but it will bounce back mostly because OPEC will cut production below 70. This zone is the lowest in 10 years. This also is because of the pandemic. This is the zone when Brent corrected. This is the zone when Brent corrected. In both cases, the PE shot up significantly after about a quarter for the stock. The EPS towers are the tallest for BPCL right now. And the PE is at the shallowest level perhaps, which does not make any sense. PG ratio of 0.27, ideal is less than 1. The PE for the stock is 7.74. Industry PE is close to 11. At current price, the dividend yield is 6%. So this is slightly less than FD right now. Note this number, dividend payout is nearly a third of the EPS, which means whatever they earn net net, 
a third of it is given to the shareholders as dividend. Note that these EPS numbers are adjusted to the bonus that was given earlier this year. These numbers, however, are not adjusted from money control. I'll show you another graph. This year, about 10 rupees has already been given out as dividend. Last year's dividend was around 25 rupees per share. Now, if you see the last four quarters, the EPS is about 45 approximately. The EPS for June quarter was pretty low because of elections. Note that when the stock is having a good time, the EPS is around 16, 25, 19. Now, the TTM EPS, which is the last four trailing quarters, is around 44. Last year, the EPS was around 62. Though last quarter was low, I still expect that this year to be back to roughly 60, 62 levels. And note that dividend yield does not need to stick to 33%. There have been times when dividend yield has been 100% also. If BPCL kind of gets in a 60, 70 rupee EPS zone by end of year and gives 100% or 70, 80% dividend, then we are talking about at least 40 or 50 bucks extra as dividend in addition to that 10 rupees which has been given out. Then at current stock price, we are talking about in excess of 10 to 12% of dividend for the year. Stock market will love that number. I think at least the dividend yield for the year will be 8 to 9% at least. Now at this point, the strengths are that the worst seems to be over in the previous quarter. That was an artificial quarter because the prices could not be calibrated to market crude prices. I don't expect that to happen in the remaining year at all. There are no private players. Government has a monopoly. So whatever government decides, that will happen. The weakness, of course, is there is too much government intervention. So for example, if government wants to reduce the prices because of the upcoming elections, they'll do it. You can't stop it. Opportunity is low Brent prices right now. And I don't expect these prices to go up drastically at least for one or two quarters. Also, this is my personal feeling that government needs money right now, though they have not spent much in terms of current account deficit, but they will take a lot of money from the PSUs this year, especially in Q3 and Q4. For that, they want PSUs to earn a lot. For that, prices will not come down much. Threats, like I said, on account of elections, significant domestic price decrease or international Brent prices go up significantly. I don't see any of these happening to have a significant impact on the EPS. So overall, I think one or two quarters, BPCL will make new all-time highs. In fact, I expect it to easily cross 400. At least 380, 390 levels are possible, which is at least a 10 to 12% uptick from where we are today. In two quarters, that's a decent return. So I'm happy to hold what I bought today even for one or two quarters. Now, if dividend yield goes up, then unless the crude prices go say above 90 or 100, I might hold it for the mid to long term also because till that point, the dividend will be intact. Hope this analysis was useful. Let me know if there's some other stock for which you want me to do the analysis in the oil pack. Thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.